Well, welcome to Monday morning's Coffee with Job. Um, it's a bit frustrating because I'd already recorded this and it's outside, it's kind of wet here. And um, anyway, my microphone didn't work. So I'm just gonna, I'm just doing this in, inside uh, my office and I hope it records okay for you. Um, welcome, as I say, to Coffee with Job. This week, we're gonna end up looking at what I consider to be possibly the greatest statement of faith ever. Um, it's a statement it, well, in the Bible. I just find it just uh, extraordinary. But before we come to that, we're going to go to Job chapter 19 and verse 13. By the way, oh, somebody did ask, um, why do you call it coffee with Job? Would Job have drunk coffee? Well, of course he had an espresso, didn't he? I, I wasn't going to call it camel's milk with Job, was I? Whatever suitable beverage you have, it's it's up for you, but... This is Job, and here there is this just incredible loneliness. And I know that, that some of you can identify with some part of this. So let's read from verse 13 of chapter 19. He has alienated my family from me. My acquaintances are completely estranged from me. My relatives have gone away. My closest friends have forgotten me. This is one of the worst parts of the God forsakenness that he experiences because he also loses his people he loved. I mean, Job had lots of friends. Job had a big family. And he's saying here that from the kind of outer circle of his social media friends who defriended him, right up to his closest relatives and best friends who've disowned him, They've gone. Job's passion for God does not mean that he doesn't have a care for human relationships. In fact, I would suggest that, that your passion for God means that you care more for your human relationships. So verse 16, he says, I summon my servant, but he does not answer, though I beg him with my own mouth. We used to live in a uh, farmhouse that uh, we did up and uh, when my dad was working on the farm and it was an old house that it still had the servants bells in it and I remember saying to my mum that uh, well mum this is a great idea we can you know ring these bells and you'll come up and deliver us breakfast in bed uh, no that's not the way it's going to be but imagine if you were used to having servants at your beck and call and then they just despise you you know it would have been absolutely horrendous then Verse 17, my breath is offensive to my wife. I'm loathsome to my own family. Halitosis, you know, physically repulsed by someone. And imagine being physically repulsed by your partner. And then even worse, even the little boys scorn me. When I appear, they ridicule me. Maybe that's not worse. But in Israel's code, that was horrendous to be ridiculed by children. All my intimate friends detest me. Those I love have turned against me. I'm nothing but skin and bones. I've escaped only by the skin of my teeth. This is where we get that expression from by. And it probably means here that he lost his teeth and he was just left with his gums. So stinking breath, no teeth, difficult to speak, broken skin, ruined body. Have pity on me, my friends. Have pity for the hand of God has struck me. Why do you pursue me as God does? Will you never get enough? of my flesh. This is the ultimate loneliness. This is no human friends, no fellowship, no helper at his side, no companionship. This time 10 years ago, I was very, very seriously ill and Annabelle was at my side and my children came. My daughter flew from Australia. Friends came in, people came in. To be on your own in such circumstances is awful. Ash calls this the miserable loneliness of hell. It's such a foolish thing, isn't it? People who go, oh, I want to go to hell because I'll be there with all my mates and we'll party. No, hell's not an eternal party, just as heaven's not an eternal church service. Hell is the ultimate loneliness. Is there anyone who's gone lower than Job? Well, I think, yes, Christ has. You know, Christ, everyone deserted him. The crowds called on him, then shouted to crucify him. In Isaiah 53, we were told that he, he, he was so repulsive physically that people turned their eyes away from him. 
His friends deserted him. God, why have you forsaken me? He went into hell for us. I often think of that, that Jesus went to hell so that we wouldn't have to. And that Jesus experienced this ultimate loneliness so that there is an answer to our loneliness. What a friend we have in Jesus. We'll find out more tomorrow. And hopefully I'll be outside my camp. My uh, mic will be working. So God bless you and see you tomorrow. Bye.